morning everybody let's dive into this keysim interaction which is number one on our list of the three components that make up the van der Waals force now to start we're going to just define some letters again we're going to say that this w of r is going to be the interaction energy and that similarly you can imagine this w is like the work it would take to pull apart this configuration and attraction between two atoms or molecules. And we can also write down that the force between the molecules would be the negative derivative with respect to distance. And where R is, of course, this radius distance between the two objects. So the picture we're going to try to put in our mind today is two dipoles that are going to be sitting at some angle to each other. We'll call the magnitude of them P1 and P2. And we can parameterize them with a few angles. Okay, theta 1, theta 2. We can also define this as a muthal angle. Imagine rotating this around towards you. We'll call that just phi. We only need one of those. And then R, we can say, is the distance between the center of the dipoles. Okay, so with this, we can imagine that the potential now depends not only on R, but also on theta and phi. Where theta is just meant to rep represent both of those angles. But what we want in this keysum interaction again the shun is implied as always is actually going to be the average over all the angles of this quantity because what we're saying is this is a relatively weak interaction both of the dipoles are free to tumble around and rotate so the only thing we're going to get left is the average over the angles and we're going to call that w of r so we need to figure out how can we perform this average over the angles. So in trying to compute this average over the angles, we're going to first talk about the Boltzmann factor. So that would be taking the angle averaged interaction energy and dividing by KP, KBT, which is thermal energy. And we're going to say this would be equal to the average over angle of R omega. Omega here, the solid angle, is going to represent theta and phi over kT. Now a lot of times we drop the B, but that K is still the Boltzmann factor. Now what we're saying is this Keesum interaction is the weak version of this dipole-dipole interaction in which they're free to rotate. So in that case, W of R or W of R and Omega is going to be small compared to thermal energy. Accordingly we can expand both of these exponents and continue equating them. So expanding this side we would get 1 minus W of R over KT and we'll just leave it at that. That's a simple uh, expansion of the exponential function, Taylor expansion. Take a look at the other side. We're going to maintain that average. We're going to get 1 minus W R omega over KT plus, we'll go to second order over here, 1 half W squared over KT, also squared. So what we can do here is cross out the ones since obviously one averages to just a regular one multiply through by minus kt and we'll see what we're left with so the w of r is equal to the average of w of r and omega minus w of r and omega squared over 2 kt. 
and we're, again we're truncating after second order. So if we're looking to perform an average over angle of these two terms, first we have to actually write down what is W and of R and omega for our case. So I'll just write down the magnitude of it without really explaining the geometry of where it comes from. But we'll come back to it later when we revisit dipole-dipole interactions. So it's simply the magnitude P1, P2 of both of the dipoles. And we get this angular dependence 2 cosine theta 1 cosine theta 2 minus sine theta 1 sine theta 2 cosine phi. So some complicated angular stuff this all gets divided by 4 pi epsilon 0, our favorite constants from electrostatics, times r to the third. So what we need is to perform an average of these two pieces, of this just by itself, and then of this squared. So as we're doing this, it's useful to know how these averages work out. Well, sine of theta 0 or am I saying average of sine theta equals average of cosine theta simply equal to zero and because this is clearly going to show up in this first expression this term isn't going to contribute anything so you only need to consider the squared one actually now sine squared of theta average is equal to two-thirds cosine squared theta averaged is equal to one-third and if we want to look at phi which is again a different angle it's actually equal between cosine and sine in both cases to one-half so if we plug in these numbers to this thing squared we can get our final average so the final expression we're going to get after performing the average of the squared term here it's going to be just simply W of R. It's going to be equal to now the magnitude of P1 squared times magnitude of P2 squared, since of course we're looking at the squared term. 2 is going to go away, but we're going to have a 3 coming from some of those 2 thirds and 1 thirds. 4 pi epsilon naughts now squared. We have one factor of KBT just as we did up here and since the energy by itself is to the third the squared contributions are to the sixth so this is the interaction energy between two dipoles that are free to rotate in space with respect to each other as a function of only the distance between them this is the key some energy and the first of the one over r to the sixth dependencies that make up the van der Waals force. In our next video, we'll look at look at take a look at the second one, which is the Debye interaction. And we'll see you then.